All right, welcome everybody. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. We're doing some beautiful pink orchids today. Um, so we're going to jump right in and, and get into the video. We're going to do a sketch first, pencil drawing. And then once we do that, we'll uh, get right into the painting portion of our uh, composition. And again, in the beginning, we just cover some really cool, interesting technique type things. And uh, we cover a, how to get a, um, a really good pencil line around your painting so that when you're going to go to mat it and frame it, everything's going to work out just right for you. So actually, I can just show you quickly that once you're... Um, painting and you have, let's see if I can find my mat here. Okay, so this is, we draw our pencil line just a little bit larger than our mat and then you can move around your mat and get that perfect location you want to have your painting. Or you can do it like this. Or you can even change it around and do something like this. Or you can use a smaller mat or a larger mat. You can use a larger mat than this. But this is just a fun way to put your pencil lines down first on your paper that you're working on, your pad of paper, whatever paper you might be working on, so that this way you can put a mat on this and frame it. And uh, it'll look absolutely wonderful and everything will be looking just right. Okay. So we're going to get into the video in just a second. Again, thanks for watching. And if you're brand new, welcome. If it's your first time here on my channel, thanks so much for coming by. You're going to have a really fun time learning watercolor. We cover all the techniques and basic fundamentals of watercolor week after week, month after month, and year after year here on my channel. So it doesn't matter. This week we're doing flowers. Next week it might be a lighthouse. The, you know, After that we might do a portrait painting, a landscape, a cityscape painting. But every week and every time we're doing paintings, we're always covering the basic fundamentals of watercolor. And the more you focus in on those things and work with those techniques and methods as we're going, you will definitely pick up on it and your painting will get so much better. Your drawing and your painting skills will really improve dramatically in a somewhat quick fashion as long as you're doing the basic fundamentals all the time. And that's how I teach and I'm glad that many of you have already found uh, that um, your paintings have gotten a lot better. Uh, quickly as you're uh, following my videos and so I'm just excited that you're here and again if you're brand new and this is your first time coming to my channel you're in a great place I have tons of videos on beginner style videos so you can go to those first if you want this is more of an advanced kind of uh, video where we have you know more complex colors uh, more advanced uh, palette and paints and we're using maybe better quality brushes that are handled a little differently but when you go to the beginners, uh, my Extreme Beginner series, if you just type in Extreme Beginners in YouTube, the Extreme Beginner series covers using a less expensive palette, more simple to use, easier, quicker for you, so you don't have to stress over squeezing paints out and all that stuff. That can be a real pain, you know, uh, to do that all the time. So that's for someone that's really been painting maybe a while, like a year or two. You, you start to get into some tube paints and you don't mind it. But in the beginning, you just want to draw and paint a lot, not be messing around with paint tubes and palette colors and all that kind of stuff so you'll learn that as you go but again I'm going to be uh, honest with you the extreme beginners are perfect if you're just starting out those paintings that we do on extreme beginners on YouTube and then uh, you can certainly follow along with these videos if it doesn't say extreme beginners in the title of my YouTube videos still a good thing to watch along too as well on those videos because you're going to learn cool stuff along the way and the more information you can absorb like a sponge that's perfect because you'll remember it it'll be the more you hear something over, uh, repetition is the mother of skill. So the more things are repeated and you hear things over and over, you'll remember it much more uh, quickly and readily so that when you're painting, you'll just have all these things at your fingertips. So let's get started. Okay, so we saw the finished painting and now we're just going to kind of uh, reverse engineer everything and start from the very beginning of how we got to this a lovely painting that we completed of some uh, pink orchids. Uh, someone in the YouTube comments section had mentioned, hey Chris, uh, would you consider painting some orchids? We, we, um, we're we not sure if you've done any before. Would Maybe would you consider doing some? And I thought, we haven't done flowers in a, a, a little while. So I, I And I was actually on a, on a project uh, a location um, and I noticed that there were some flowers along some of the um, uh, condominiums I was working nearby so I took some uh, 
pictures and we have that. We have our pictures there. And uh, I'll just put down a mat on my paper. So what I'll do is this is a standard mat size. I just wanted to put this on the paper and just get a basic idea of where my mat window is going to be. And I put points. I just put a couple dots with my pencil in four corners here. And then I just went out on a 45 degree angle, about an inch, each point out an inch. So I went out an inch, out an inch, out an inch here, and out an inch there approximately. And then that was my rectangle. This way, when we paint this painting, we can put our mat on, and then we have a little bit of room to move around and get that perfect location that we would like to see. Sometimes if you move your mat around a little bit, you'll notice it looks a little better if your subject matter is maybe closer to one side of the, the mat or the other. So you can do that. That gives you a little bit of play in your um, composition and your painting so that when you go to mat it, you'll have some extra room to work with. So similar to like a photographer or when they make films, they crop things down. They'll start out with a larger format for, let's say, for photographers, and then they trim things down and make them smaller and get the perfect uh, location that they would say would be the perfect location for their um, subject matter. So the thing is, um, if you're a photographer, let's say, and you're taking pictures and you're out doing, you know, all kinds of interesting sightseeing and whatever, vacation pictures, all that good stuff, or if you do it for a living and you're a photographer, the thing is, you're actually not going to stress too much about your um, subject matter being in the perfect spot on your photograph. What you do is you use a wider format and you take the picture from a little further back and then when you go in and you're uh, on your computer and you're trimming down your pictures and making them, uh, let's say for a um, anything you might be working on, you can then crop your pictures down and adjust your your photographs with your with your computer and kind of, you know, trim down and crop your pictures to get them to look just perfect. So that's the same thing with art. You can do that when you're painting. You paint your painting, you leave extra room, and then when you place your mat on, you're, you're able to have that extra flexibility to move that mat around so you get just the right spot. You might think that composition in that painting is going to, you know, is going to look just great when you have that extra room. If you just were to make it, if we were to make our pencil lines just the same size as this window, we wouldn't have much room to move around our mat once we decide we're going to frame this. So I just hope that's a little bit helpful for everyone. And uh, we'll keep moving on here. So we're going to actually um, start out our painting. And we can just do a very light preliminary sketch first just to kind of get a feel for where we're going to have our flowers. So let's just say we can start, maybe we'll start down here. We notice that the stems for these uh, orchids are about two-thirds, uh, three-quarters of the way across from the left, or one-quarter of the way in, or one-third of the way in. It looks more like a third, so one-third, two, th okay, so we have that. So it's about a third of the way across from left to right, and so we're just going to actually, we have like a metal stake there just to hold our orchids in place and the stems, and then, so we can do that. And then we're going to look here and say, well, this section of orchids here is about a little bit above halfway. So if we were to draw a, li a line halfway across our paper like so, these are going to be right at that bo the bottom of these flowers will be right at the bottom of this line. So then we can do that, make a halfway point, halfway about. You can see that's about halfway, that right there. And then we come in here and we just do a, like a light preliminary sketch just to kind of make sure we're... We're getting everything on the paper the way it looks on our photograph. We're not getting things too small, too large, um, off-center, not placed the way it is here. The photograph looks actually good. So this looks like a good, when I took this photograph, I feel it's a good uh, overall uh, design for the, for the painting by taking a picture the way I did. And then we're just going to, so that's good. Right there we have center of the flower there, C center of the flower over here. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to say, all right, now these flowers over here are actually coming from here too as well. There's another stake there and then there's, this goes like this. And then it, j it just as the stem comes up here above this leaf, ah, uh, this petal, you can kind of see that it
it starts to flower right here. And then we just want to get the basic idea of it, of the shapes of the, the orchids here. I think they're looking good so far. Let's see. And then here you can always, if you notice you might have added too much stem over there, you just lift that up with a, a kneaded eraser and just, and then re, uh, redraw that line there. And then over here we have another orchid over here and this one is sort of in a profile type position here. It's kind of um, not facing us but the other way. Uh, so we'll just do it this way. And that looks a little interesting too. That's kind of cool to have maybe one of the um, orchids kind of in a different... Um, so one is... This one here is facing us. or These three are facing us basically. One, two, and three. And then four, the fourth uh, flower over here is facing the right side over here. So that looks good. That's kind of interesting. We might say, you know what? I've done this before a, a number of times when I do flowers. Sometimes I second guess myself. We might not put this over here like so, but I tend to think it looks good because it's more organic. It kind of feels organic, this drawing that we just we just did here. And this picture is sort of organic too. I didn't sit there for 20 minutes trying to figure out how to take this photograph. I just went up set the uh, orchids in the potted uh, in the pot on top of that uh, table in my backyard and I just basically zoomed into it took a few seconds and said okay and I kind of framed it out looked at it through the camera I used this as my camera my phone and then I just found that this looked good the flowers are more or less the top of the painting the top uh, half and then the stems come down here and then we have a few more uh, some of the leaf forms here so we, we can do that too a couple leaf forms here like so and one more over there so we have sort of now a, a feeling a nice like a weight it's weighted down down here with some of these greens these leaves forms down here and I won't probably draw in that potted plant so much I don't know if that would look good maybe that might look good let's try it okay so we'll do that we'll put the uh, We'll put the um, the flower pot there, and uh, so we're gonna kind of really stick to this photograph that we're doing. The only thing I would say I'm not gonna do is the background. I'm gonna really just do this without any of the greenery in the background. I might just add a little bit of green or blue to kind of maybe put some color in there for the background. But let's leave it with just the the pink orchids and. Um, the green leaf forms down here and I think we'll be all set. So what I'll do is right before we start our painting I'm just going to lift up that uh, layout line I guess we could call that or a sketch line just to, as we're designing our drawing. We draw little lines you can lift those up a little bit. And I think I'm going to paint the details in <clears throat> on this and we're going to keep it very loose and free. We're not going to I notice about flowers, you know, years ago I realized when I was paint, drawing and painting flowers that it, sometimes it's not a great thing to try to get every detail. I mean, you could do that. My style is more, I'm going to try to get the abstract feeling of this, but try to get some details in there too. But I'm not going to sit here for hours and hours trying to get every little line on the petals of the flower in there or the exact shapes of the center of the flowers. Uh, you'll notice I'm going to try to get this done quickly at a good pace and that will t ultimately lead to a good fresh looking painting not one that might look so overworked that you, you kind of can feel the tension in the painting because you can feel the person that did the painting was just having a lot of tension trying to do everything that actually translates into your painting so always remember whatever you're feeling whatever emotion you have when you're painting that will translate into your painting so if you're really stressing over a painting and working on it for hours and recorrecting things and erasing things that will show through on your painting but if you just go in there and have a fun time you know fun time with it enjoy it try to get the basics of it down uh, first and you can always let it sit and then come back a day or two later and maybe add a few more details in but I think it's always good to just go in and do a good quick rendition of your your subject matter and see how that goes and then maybe, uh, you know, you try every other painting. Try painting, taking a lot of time, hours and hours, and then try a couple of paintings. Just try to go in there and get it done in like 20 minutes to a half an hour. You know, obviously, you know, something like this, smaller size painting, larger paintings, obviously, 
take longer to do. But just a couple little tidbits of information as you go forward here and uh, work on a painting like this and we're going to come right back in a second. Okay, so we're back and I actually just wanted to mention that um, sometimes when we're working on video here we have an issue with um, not being able to see the, the pencil drawings that well. So I see that the border came out really good but the, I'm going to redraw the flowers just so you can kind of see the shapes a little better. So I'm going to sharpen the old pencil here and this way it will kind of um, we'll get a better idea of the, um, the shape. So I'm just going to go in here with a darker pencil line and I'm just going to contour draw this here. So I'm just going to kind of move around the drawing and then I'm going to go up. These were the, there's a metal uh, stake here and then the And there's another stem here, and then another stake over here. So I'm not going to get too bogged down with the details on this, but then when we get here to the flowers, we're just going to redraw these. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to do this here. So I'm going to do these. So I'm trying to get the details of these uh, orchids here and they are pretty nuanced with the shapes. So I'm going to try to capture those. Some of them are a little more pointy, some of them have a little bit of a... Um, but I try to get it as close as I can see it as I'm looking at the drawing. And then this one over here on the side is interesting. It's in profile and stem is there and I think I might have made this a little different I'm gonna leave it as it is I'm not gonna start correcting everything everywhere and erasing things if something again this is a composition we're having fun have fun with your watercolors if something doesn't come out perfect when you're drawing it don't worry don't keep erasing stuff you know just once you get the paint going on here you're gonna notice you'll be able to have a lot more fun and get what you're looking to achieve in the painting completed which is lots of beautiful colors uh, the fun of the watercolor in itself, the um, water flowing around on the paper and the washes and splashes and, you know, it's going to be a fun experience just painting in itself so we don't have to get too worried about the drawing. As long as it's somewhat close, we're okay. And again, abstract is sort of, I try to bring abstraction to my paintings. I don't always try to get everything 100% exact. There are some painters and maybe some of you like to do really, really exacting details and that's fine too. But my, my idea is I try to keep it a little more loose, fresh, and not get incredibly um, fixated on details. Although details do look great, and you know some paintings I will do more detail. But this type of painting I'm going to have a fun time, and uh, we'll see how it goes here. So let's get some alizarin crimson here. So we're going to get our colors out on the paper. Um, alizarin crimson, rose matter, and then I think there's some purple, so we're going to get... Um, some purple here, and that's uh, uh, Ultramarine Violet by Winsor Newton. So it's kind of like a purpley pink color. So we have the flower colors here, and we will go back in and get straight paint at some point. And there's also some cadmium red I see in some of the flowers. There's a little bit of cadmium red with maybe, I'll rinse off my brush. Uh, I like to rinse off the brush, dry off the brush a little bit when I'm working colors. 
so that I don't get everything too jumbled up when I'm painting. So there is some cadmium red I see. And then if you need, you got it. let's get some really rich colors in there. So let's make sure we have in our palette some really, really, see I'm mixing that dark, dark over here, just so we have that to work with. And of course, um, the purple. And also, we will um, remember to sort of Make sure we have some really light washes too, like so. So we just add more water to this here, just some water with a little bit of paint. Uh, that's good. Maybe a little more purple and cerulean blue and purple over here on this side, and then this more red, alizarin like crimson, rose matter. So we have some really, really light wash here, and then our darker more intense washes are going to be here, the medium tonal values, lighter tonal values here on the palette, darker tonal values up here, and that should give us enough uh, range that we can get this done nicely. And then I'll just lift up a couple pencil lines just to, so then not everything is all completely. Okay, good. Now, let's start with our reds here and pinks, purples. There's some whites, so I'm going to go around that. And you can really adjust your colors too if you want, you know, you can take more time and get the color just perfect. Maybe there's a color we can buy in a tube, a tube paint color that maybe might be more exacting to that exact color. I don't know if there is, but I think we can get it pretty close. Now I'll go in on top of that wash and just add in some some more darker color just to give it some and I noticed that there's a little bit of that white along the outer edges and we will capture that with a little bit of the green background we will add a little green to our green and blue let's do it now so we start to remind ourselves that we're going to be doing this type of technique and as we go, which is going to be a little bit of cerulean blue and sap green. And we're going to want to just go like this and go around the petal like this. Rinse off the brush, dry off the brush a little bit, and then we just sort of go around the flower shape a little bit. Like this, maybe a little more over in here. Maybe a little bit of cerulean blue, a little more blue. Just so we can get that feeling of the uh, white edges on the flowers. Because there is that really fine white bright uh, edge around the outsides of the petals. So to get that, we can just go around it with our paint, maybe a little bit of gold as well here, a couple of splashes and I think that's just something to have some fun and make some different techniques as we go. And then we'll continue and we'll do some more of our leaf forms, nice carefully Mix on the paper too, add a little purple, ultramarine violet to the uh, paper. Once we put on some of that pinkish red, so here we're just continuing our washes.
no stress here, just getting on some paint, some washes. We're using our darker washes up here, down here. These are a little bit lighter. We could take some of that and do a little splashing up here just to keep the... Uh, you can paint outside the lines, of course. And there's some more high intensity red. More of a rose matter, I think, here. Like that. And again, uh, I'm not going to get too worried about every detail here. Let me just get a couple of the things I see. There's a little bit of yellow or gold in there. And some purple. And if you think things are, you can always take some tissue if you think water uh, water and color is sort of going beyond the areas you wanted it to on that on those leaves here. You can just gently lift up with a tissue or a paper towel. So this is where the glazing technique, when you practice the glazing technique on my channel a lot, which we do a lot, right? We use the glazing technique often. You'll, you'll be reminded that you can actually do this in a more of a glazing technique. We're doing this a la prima right now. We're just painting everything at one time. But you could use the glazing technique uh, to do this painting, which means you'd leave these more high intensity reds till last. So you would paint the lighter washes first and then come in and do the darker subtly, but there's those more high intensity pinks in the centers of the flowers. And so that's something you can Work, you know, work out with your own how you want to create your painting. So here we can what I'm doing is I'm actually trying not to get too close to these two higher intensity rose matter uh, spots of color that are that I put in. This way it won't uh, leak out or cauliflower out or blossom or bloom out into my petals that I'm doing right now. And you can do some... Those will soften up a little bit. You can rinse your brush, dry off a little bit of the paint, and make it a little more subtle if you want. Like that. And I'm leaving that. You can see a lot of pencil lines in this. I hope everyone likes pencil lines in their paintings. I do. And I think if we mix around some of the purples. I think one of the keys to this painting is you know, having a variation of colors, right? So we had alizarin crimson, rose matter, uh, ultramarine violet, Winsor Newton brand, ultramarine violet, which is probably my favorite violet color in the, in the two paints. So I think when we get that variation, I guess the thing I would probably avoid if I could is coming in and just taking like one color like alizarin crimson or just taking one color like a, a rose matter and trying to paint the whole painting that way. I think if you're going to get your colors out on your palette, even some cadmium red here um, to mix in, that just gives us another, another layer of, of color, um, interesting color uh, vibrations. And that will translate into a much better painting if you're having numerous uh, different uh, color colors in the, in the painting. So we are this is looking really good and uh, we're going to take a break soon. I like to take breaks. You probably are wondering why I haven't taken a break quicker. Maybe. 
<laughs> so you always hear me harping about brakes. <laughs> and then we're going to take a break. I think that's good now we can get in some of these stems and these leaf forms down here. We'll get those going next segment, but for right now we're just going to take a break, let this set up, and uh, we'll restart things in just a second. Hey everybody, just a quick informational. I'm really excited. I've been uh, invited to the Thousand Island Arts Center to teach a uh, workshop this summer. It's uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a daytime workshop, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. I'm going to put up the itinerary in just a second, too, as well. But I wanted you to have the Thousand Island Arts Center phone number so you can call to register. Or you can also register online. That's up to you. Uh, their phone number is 315 686 Four one two three. Again, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Or you can also um, register and look up all the information online at T-I-A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Again, their website is T-I-A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Um, I th I'll put the itinerary up here so you can just, I'll scroll it. I'm not going to read it. I'll just kind of scroll it up so you can kind of see the class description. And you can look this up online too. I encourage everybody to look um, for the um, brochure. If you go to the website, you'll see a brochure button. You click on that brochure button, you'll see my course as well as other courses if you can't happen to make these dates, but you still want to take a watercolor class or watercolor course and workshop. And uh, there's also an online course for watercolor artists. So if you're interested in doing online uh, watercolor courses, they have those as well. That's something you was really, this is a great resource, everyone, for your, for your watercolor art. I know some of you mentioned that you wanted to um, do wanted to inquire about online art and watercolor painting classes. I, um, I'm i not doing them right now. I'm really looking forward to maybe in the future doing some online courses, but right now I'm just not, um, not geared up for that right now. So they have them though for those that want to do online courses, but just a great resource and Beautiful historic area, beautiful scenery, water and boats everywhere, beautiful architecture, shopping, there's uh, museums. So that's the itinerary. And um, I hope you'll all make it out to the workshop. And again, we're going to have a great time, tons of fun drawing and painting and watercolor. So I hope to see you there. And um, let's get back to our watercolor painting. All right, we are back and we let's finish this. Now we have lots of good stuff happening here. Uh, I noticed right away that I want to just keep that rounded shape on the tops here of the flowers. They look like, like buds of some sort. I want to keep those, that white, just in that one spot so that uh, it kind of matches the, I'm going to try to again match this as best I can, but not overly do it. This is dry right now to the touch, this orchid. So now I can go back in and get some rose matter and alizarin crimson and just going to put those other two darker high intensity spots of color there and that yellow and gold is 
still looking good, so I think that's fine. I added some cadmium yellow to that small portion underneath the uh, orchids in the center of the flower, and then over here I'm keeping this one a little more... Uh, I'm not getting too overly detailed on this one here, I think. A little more shadow on this side over here. And we could take like a purple and cerulean blue and maybe I think just a few I would keep them subtle. I would dry off my brush with that purple color and then just maybe do some just a few lines. That area is a little bit still damp from the so I think a few lines on the flowers, the petals of the flowers are going to be okay. This is still a little bit damp over here actually. We did add some color there and I think that looks fine. I'll get some uh, cobalt blue maybe there. And purple, just make some more, I'll make a little more wash under there. And over here I noticed there's another petal there. Make that a little darker. Maybe it's better to make this a little bit more intense with color and then leave that one. It's sort of in the background a little more. Lift up a little bit of paint. Okay, now I'll switch to maybe a smaller brush and I'll go with some burnt sienna, burnt umber, sap green, yellow ochre maybe, a little bit of cerulean blue, and we'll do a little, some stems here. So I will start off with that. Maybe change it up a little more. I might, now is a perfect time to change the water and uh, take some of the color. Let's give ourselves a fresh clean palette. That's okay there. This way we just have plenty of areas to start mixing out more paint. And uh, let's try the green, olive green and some lemon yellow. And this way we can get in some fresher, lighter looking. And this here, over this way. And then we have our, our stakes here, so we're just going to, I'll make those kind of subtle with a little bit of Payne's Gray or Ivory Black, just to have it in there, change things up a little bit, and
we'll switch back to uh, we'll do some more greens so let's get some sap green yellow ochre um, maybe some viridian blue cerulean blue so we'll just have a mix of greens um, Take some greens, let's do some. And let's get a little bit of a darker sap green with some cobalt blue. Maybe a touch of burnt sienna in there. And just we'll get that darker. This one's a little lighter. And this one here, same thing, a little lighter. And I might just add a little bit extra color in there. You can go over the pencil lines again. I tend to try to keep myself within the pencil lines just because it's all the other places in the painting we're doing that. So it just seems like subconsciously that's one thing we're just always focusing in on is staying close to the lines. I'm not trying to drift outside of them, but once we get over to here it's okay that we can go outside of the, the lines in these spots. And Let's see what we can add a little more interesting greens here. Let's do a little maybe a little bit of cerulean blue. Just make a little couple of swirly shapes, you know. And keeping it fun, lively, having a good time, swirl the brush around. A couple more like that. A couple splashes with water. Uh, what else do we have? Let's do the um, brown and blue, so a uh, burnt umber and uh, French ultramarine blue, and then we'll just have a little bit of the the um, vase here, or the uh, flower pot, and we're set. We got everything good here, so that's good there. And again, if something starts to migrate into another part of your leaf uh, forms there, you can just take a tissue, mold the tissue with your hand, boil it up and mold it so that it's not too crinkly, and you get a nice little, almost like an eraser, and then just lift up on it, put it right down where you want it, so that it gets that perfect spot. Blend it out a little bit. And I think that's good. So. Let's call this a finished painting. Again, you can always come back in the next day, maybe do a few things, but I wouldn't really add too much to this. This looks like there's plenty going on there. 
lots of splashes, fun brush strokes, beautiful uh, pink orchids and green uh, leaf forms and stems and everything looks good. I think we can call this finished and uh, glad you joined along and I'm, if it's your first time here, uh, always please consider subscribing on the right hand side down on the screen here below you'll see the subscribe button and basically all that does is just YouTube will just make sure that you're getting notifications when you open up your uh, YouTube channel when you're coming onto YouTube on your phone or your computer it'll just show you that my videos are there's a new video that has just been created this way you kinda can keep a, a track of what I'm doing each week and um, that's all it doesn't really do anything else you're not gonna get any emails or tech mes text messages or phone calls anything like that it's just a uh, YouTube's way of letting you know I make a new video by just showing you when you open up your uh, YouTube channel that you'll see my videos up uh, at the top of your list of things to watch that's all it is so again, thanks so much for coming by. We had a lot of fun, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.